Israel's future cannot be understood unless we know about the prophesied war that will kill one third of mankind. It appears that this unprecedented war could break out at any time and it will have a dramatic effect on Israel's future. We'll explain on this edition of Politics and Religion. Look, there are two things I don't discuss, politics and religion. In my house, we don't talk about politics and we don't talk about religion. I'll talk to you about anything except politics and religion. I never talk about politics and religion. Politics determines how we'll live here on Earth. Religion determines how we'll live forever. I'm Irvin Baxter. I think it's time we talk about it. Well, with all the tensions presently in the Middle East, particularly in Israel, a lot of people are asking the question, what's ahead for the nation of Israel? The prophecies of the Bible outline Israel's future in very great detail. We're going through those prophecies about what's coming for Israel. We're calling this series, Israel's Future According to to Bible prophecy. Now, in our previous lesson, we talked about the overview. We actually went through the list of major prophecies, and it was not a comprehensive list by any means, but it was an overview of events that will happen that we know for sure we have specific prophecies about that will happen from now until the second coming of Jesus Christ and the Battle of Armageddon. So what we're going to do today, we're now going to start off with the different specific prophecies. The first prophecy, and it appears one of the first ones to happen that's going to impact Israel greatly, is found in Revelation chapter number 9, verse 13 through 16. It describes what we call the sixth trumpet war. For those of you that are watching Uh, You can look on our screen here. I'll read it for the rest of you. Then the sixth angel sounded. This is Revelation 9, 13 through 16. Then the sixth angel sounded. And I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. Now remember that phrase right there. The angels were bound at the great river Euphrates. So the four angels who had been prepared for the hour and day and month and year for a specific time were released to kill, watch this, a third of mankind. So this is a prophecy of a war that's going to kill one third of the human race. Continuing on, now the number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million, and I heard the number of them. So we have three major things here that I'd like for us to look at and and remember from this scripture as we continue on. Number one, in the Sixth Trumpet War, it tells us it will begin from the area of the Euphrates River. The Euphrates is in the Middle East. It begins in Turkey, goes down through Syria, all the way down through Iraq and the empties out along the Iraqi Iranian border it runs it's the border of Iraq and Iran for about 60 to 80 miles and it empties into the Persian Gulf so the Euphrates River this is where this war is going to come from this particular area it will kill one third of the human race there are presently seven billion people on the earth one third of that would be 2.3 billion people The Bible prophesies this war. Now, to make sure that we put this in perspective, there was never a war with one million fatalities prior to World War I. Then World War I came, 8.2 million dead. 20 years later, World War II, 52 million dead. 
And now this prophecy says World War III, and it will be World War III. We're calling it the Sixth Trumpet War because it happens when the Sixth Trumpet sounds. But I promise you, it will be World War III, 2.3 billion. Ladies and gentlemen, 40 times World War II. World War II, the greatest war the world's ever known by far. But now then, 40 times that war according to the prophecy. It's going to begin from the Euphrates River area. Now, as we continue on, I want you to see point by point uh, what is happening here. I want you to look at the Euphrates. We have it here on the map for you. Notice uh, it starts way in the north in Turkey. It makes its way across the Turkish-Syrian border just east of Aleppo. Aleppo is the largest city in Syria. It then flows all the way down past Baghdad, Iraq, and then on down uh, to the Persian Gulf down at the bottom. And I want to make sure you see this because ISIS has captured between 50 and 70 percent of the Euphrates River within the last two years. It's been astounding now, remember the prophecy says this is where World War III is coming from. This is where the war is coming from that's going to kill one third of mankind. So uh, as you see it here, now let's look and find out what we know. Who will be involved in this war? We know the war is going to emanate from the Euphrates River. It will kill one third of mankind and it will feature an army of 200 million soldiers. There has never been an army of 200 million soldiers ever in all history, not even close. So we have to ask, all right, what's the army of 200 million soldiers? So who will be involved in this war? Islam for certain, because every inch of the Euphrates River is controlled by Islam. Turkey's 98% Islam, uh, Syria 92%, uh, Iraq 97%, Iran almost 100% Islam. So every inch of the Euphrates River is Islamic. So we know the powers of Islam are going to be involved in this war. Furthermore, who's the 200 million man army? There are only three potentials on the planet. Mao Zedong, in his diary, boasted that he could field an army of 200 million. He boasted the exact number in this prophecy. I doubt he knew the prophecy was there. He himself claimed to be an atheist, so he was not a Bible-reading man. And nevertheless, though, he did, in fact, boast the exact number that's in the prophecy. So the possibility of this referring to China is quite high, especially since China has just now stationed its large aircraft carrier off of the coast of Syria and is flying uh, attacks against ISIS and other people, other forces in the area of where all the boiling is taking place, all of the conflict is taking place right now. So China is already involved along the Euphrates River right now. So it's possibly China, but... India also can field an army of 200 million since its population has almost caught China now. And then the third entity on this planet with enough population to produce that kind of an army would be Islam itself. And since the entire Euphrates River is Islamic, it could be referring to Islam, an army of 200 million soldiers. And it could be that more than one of these will be involved in this particular conflict. What about the United States of America? It's very possible the U.S. is going to be involved. I wish we were not. Yet the U.S. is the leading power in the Euphrates River area right now. We're taking the leadership. We have now brought 60 nations together to form a coalition against ISIS. We are the leaders of that coalition. Furthermore, it takes a lot of nuclear weapons to kill 2.3 billion human beings, one third of mankind, a lot of nuclear weapons. And the United States has the arsenal that it would take to do that. So the, the odds are very high that the United States, in fact, is going to be involved in this war. So as we look at where we are right now, the U.S. 
is in the Middle East. It is fighting along the Euphrates. Russia is fighting along the Euphrates. And China is fighting along the Euphrates right now. So are we in this war already? Or could we be drawing near to this war? I can't tell you for certain. All I can tell you is this war is coming. Absolutely. There's no doubt about it. This war is coming and the result will be the killing of one third of mankind. I personally don't see how we can go much further without it. All the, the stage is set right now in the Middle East. And you and I need to know where we are right now because the world, in fact, it's not playing with dynamite. It's playing with nuclear weapons right now. Now, there's something else that we need to understand. Islam has a lot of prophecy. This is a prophecy program. End Time Ministries is a prophecy ministry. Well, Islam has prophecies, except they're not true. They come from the Quran. They come from the Hadith. And the prophecies of Islam, one of the prophecies which comes from the Hadith talks about Dabiq. Dabiq is a small town just off of Aleppo. I think you can see on the screen here. And I'm talking about maybe five to 10 miles away from Aleppo. And the prophecy from the Hadith states that the final war between Islam and the West will be right here. Now, ISIS believes this so strong that in, I think it was August of last year of 2014, they came up here and they captured Dabiq. Now, Dabiq is not shown here, but it's just to the right of Aleppo. They captured Dabiq so they can be prepared for this final war. Now, the prophecy says that Rome will invade. Rome is a symbol to them of Christianity. They believe that the United States is now modern day Rome and we are imposing our Christian values upon the world. Therefore, they say it is the United States that will engage a war here at Dabiq. Now, the interesting thing is we did not have access to this area at least very easily until uh, July of this year when we made a deal with Turkey that we would be able to use the Encirlik Air Base, which is just north of Aleppo and probably 10 or 15 miles from Dabiq. It's right there. We now have moved our planes in here for the purpose of fighting against ISIS in the area of Dabiq. Many people at ISIS believe they are right now on the brink of the final war. And they don't care if they win or lose this war because they believe they will be losing and the Mahdi, which is their Messiah, will show up and fight against the armies of the heathens. And Jesus will also come at that time. He will take a cross and break it and say, the story of the cross that you've been told is not true. It never happened and convert all of the Christians to Islam. Now that's what they believe is coming. And I mean, they really believe it. So they're ready to fight to the death here at Dabiq. Another thing that's interesting is ISIS. Well, I'll tell you what, let me save that for when we come right back. Let me take a moment to remind all of you that I will be in San Antonio, Texas, this coming weekend on Saturday night at 6 o'clock, I will be at the Hope Center at 4545 North Loop, 1604 West. America's God-given destiny. The seeds of the Battle of Armageddon were sown on November 29, 2012. The seeds sown on that historic day are in the process of producing a dreadful harvest. The Bible actually describes it as the harvest of Armageddon. Learn the story of what happened on November 29, 2012, when the seeds were sown for the world's final battle, the growth of which are the events that will occur on the journey to where the story ends, at the reaping of the harvest of Armageddon. Call 1-800-END-TIME to order this important lesson. Take your understanding of the end time to a new level with our Outlines and Quizzes workbook. This workbook accompanies our Understanding the End Time 14 Lessons series. 
As you watch each lesson, follow along with the outlines, then take a quiz and check your answers at the end. These are all contained in one convenient workbook so you can study as well as teach prophecy wherever you go. Use it as a study guide to cement main points and scriptures that Irvin teaches in each lesson. It's also a great tool if you host an end-time Bible study. Help your group solidify what they're learning by getting a copy for each person to follow along with the video and then to take home and study on their own. Get the workbook by calling 1-800-END-TIME or go to endtime.com and be ready to instruct many as the scripture says. Once again, I will be in San Antonio, uh, San Antonio, Texas, this coming Saturday night at 6 p.m. My message will be America's God-given destiny. You don't want to miss that lesson. Some people are saying it's the best thing that End Time Ministry has ever produced. That will be at 6 o'clock. The location is 4545 North Loop, 1604 West at the Hope Center Church. And then on Sunday at 1115 a.m., I'm going to be speaking about late-breaking prophetic fulfillments and receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now, a lot of people are saying, what do we do with all of this? What about this war that's coming? How do we escape? Where do we go? Do we build bomb shelters? Do we store water? Do we store food? What do we do? Well, the number one thing all of us should do is to be filled with God's Spirit because the Bible says as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. If we are not Spirit-led beings, we're not going to know what to do. The things coming at us are going to be too huge and too catastrophic unless God is in us and we can hear His voice. Well, the first thing to learning to hear the voice of God is to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is what Jesus Christ came to this earth to make available to all of us. Many of you are wanting to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to be teaching on that subject. I've seen thousands of people receive it. I'm totally familiar with the subject and I'm going to be talking about it. And then after we teach on the baptism of the Holy Spirit and how to receive it, then we're going to give you a chance to receive it. We've been having many, many people receiving the Holy Ghost when we've taught this lesson. I think it's going to be a blessing to you. So we're sort of mixing prophecy here with an opportunity to receive an unprecedented spiritual experience. So if you're interested, uh, make sure you're there on Sunday morning at 1115. One more time, that's at the Hope Center Church, 4545 North Loop, 1604 West. And I'm looking forward to seeing all of you there. Now, let's get back to our lesson. I mentioned to you that there is a prophecy in the Hadith that actually foretells that there will be an invasion uh, against Islam at Dabiq. Here's what it says. The last hour would not come. This is supposedly the words of Muhammad himself. The last hour would not come until the Romans land at Al-Amak or in Dabiq, which those are two places close together. An army consisting of the best soldiers of the people of the earth at that time will come from Medina to counteract them. So that's the prophecy. And they believe this so strong that they've actually named their recruitment magazine the Dabiq. Uh, I actually have a picture of a page out of the Dabiq magazine. It shows uh, one of the terrorists, one of the ISIS soldiers, and it talks there about how they're going to establish the a caliph, which is the worldwide Islamic authority. Uh, it also says, according to the Hadith, the area will play a historical role in the final battle. So this is the Dabiq magazine that they publish. I think it's monthly. And the whole purpose is to continually feed the fire of recruitment to draw you know, young men and women from all over the world to come and fight with ISIS to tell them, this is the final battle. This is prophetic. 
You don't want to miss out. And they're coming by the hundreds of thousands. So it's so interesting when you see behind the scenes some of the things that are actually causing all these things to happen right now. Now, I want to continue on with you because we have to ask, when you talk about 2.3 billion dead, who's going to die and who's going to survive? It's a natural question. You want to know that? I want to know it. Will the United States be wiped off the map? What about Islam? Well, let's talk about it for just a moment. Well, many will die from Islam. One way we know this is when you see the prophecies of the very end time of the final three and a half years after this war is done, Islam is not even mentioned. It has become a non-factor. The center for world power has swung to Europe. So it's obvious that Islam, as much as it is capturing the center of world attention today, is going to be greatly reduced in influence. So apparently many people will die from the Islamic world. In addition to that, we don't see anything about China in the prophecies of the era after this war. China has 1.3 billion people. 2.3 billion have to die if the entire nation of China were wiped off the map. You still have to have another 1 billion dead. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a world war. Now, I want to say again, where's safety? There's one place, one place only. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. The only safe place is your relationship with Jesus Christ. It needs to be certain. It needs to be sure. It needs to be close because this world is headed for an unprecedented war. I would fail you if I didn't tell you the truth. You say, you're scaring me. Well, I don't want to scare you. And if you have eternal life, it should not scare you. If you have the assurance of eternal life, because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. If you don't have that assurance, you need to send for our free brochure, What Do You Mean Born Again? We explain all about it. Because once you're born again, you have the assurance of eternal life. Now, you, don't, you can call us here at 800 in time or you can go to our website, endtime.com, and down about halfway on the page, you'll see, what do you mean born again? Click on it, read it for yourself. I lay out in layman's terms, so anyone can understand it, exactly what it means in the Bible to be born again. So that's your number one defense. I know that may not be what you thought you should hear, but if you are born again and you're ready for eternity, then all of the fear is gone out of these things. And suddenly you can move from a base of fear to a base of evangelism, of reaching this world. This world has never needed a revival like we need right now. Now, let's continue on. So Islam is going to take a big hit, no doubt. Probably China. China could be obliterated. The United States of America has great reason to war against China. China has us hostage right now. We owe China $1.3 trillion. Most people think that the 21st century before it's over will become the Chinese century and that China will dominate the world. A lot of people don't want a communist dictatorship to dominate the world. And I don't blame them. I don't want it either. Nevertheless, it looks like China may be obliterated or greatly diminished. What's that mean? That means we should pray for the people of China because these are individuals with souls that will spend eternity somewhere and they need to have a great revival before these things come down. Now, what about the United States? I'm afraid the United States, if I were guessing, and again, the Bible does not specifically say this. We know Islam is going to be there. We know an army of 200 million is going to be there. Beyond that, we're not told exactly who's going to be in this war. However, it appears that the United States will be involved because we're involved in everything in the Middle East. Our bombers are flying every day over the Euphrates River where this war is going to start from. So it appears we will be involved. America is scheduled for judgment. And I don't want us to be judged. I'm not saying that with any happiness in my heart. I want us to avoid it. If we would repent, we would avoid it. But 
because of our abortions, because of our same-sex marriage. The Bible says, because judgment is not speedily executed against an evil deed, it is set in the hearts of men to do evil continually. Everybody in America, President Obama thinks he's getting by with this. Same-sex marriage. He is the champion of same-sex marriage. We all know that. We've watched it happen. He couldn't wait to flip on the rainbow lights at the White House the evening that the Supreme Court ruled on same-sex marriage. So we are headed for judgment. But I want to tell you this. The Bible teaches that God knows how to execute judgment upon the ungodly, but to deliver the godly out of temptation. God knows every one of us. The Bible says the hairs of our head are numbered. And he knows how to differentiate between those who approve of same-sex marriage and those who do not. Uh, Those who approve of abortion and those who do not. God knows where those dividing lines are and he knows it very well. So our job is to be right with him as we move forward. But if I were guessing today, I would think that the United States may lose 10 million, 25 million, maybe even 50 million because China now has intercontinental ballistic missiles that can reach any city in the United States of America right now. So if we are in a full-blown conflict with China, which is a possibility, then we could take a major hit. The only place of safety is in Jesus Christ. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. Will India be involved? Possibly so. I don't know for sure. India has been involving herself in Israeli and Palestinian politics. They could be sucked into this whole thing. It's going to be a world war. A lot of nations, many, many nations are going to be involved in this war and 2.3 billion will die before it's over with. Okay, now once we reach this point, we're talking today about Israel's future according to Bible prophecy. After 2.3 billion have died, they're burying people with bulldozers. They can't get them buried fast enough. It is going to be a totally unprecedented scene on this world. So what's going to happen to Israel? Well, number one, Israel's probably going to stay out of this war uh, because Israel survives beyond this war. The Bible is explicitly clear. Israel survives to make a peace deal with the Palestinians. So Israel's probably going to stay out of the war. Iran may be involved, but Iran will survive because the Bible clearly says that Iran along with Russia, will invade Israel at the time of the Battle of Armageddon, which will have to happen at least four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years after this World War III, after after the Sixth Trumpet War. And then some of these nations may participate, but not be destroyed. We know for certain that Israel survives, Iran survives, because they live to fight the Battle of Armageddon. Uh, seven, eight, nine years. We don't know the exact time frame. The Bible doesn't give that to us. Here's what we do know. We know this is this Euphrates River War must happen before the final three and a half years called the Great Tribulation. It may happen before the final seven years. It may happen eight or nine years before the Battle of Armageddon. We don't know, but we know it has to happen before the time called the Great Tribulation. We're talking today about Israel's future. The Bible tells us what it is. We don't have to guess. It's clearly revealing scripture. Israel's future according to Bible prophecy. In the space of just one week in Paris, France, eight synagogues were attacked. One was firebombed by a 400 strong mob. Additionally, a kosher supermarket and pharmacy were smashed and looted. The crowds chanted, death to the Jews, and slit the Jews' throats. One banner at the demonstrations read, Israel. There's some more evidence concerning the Great Tribulation and the fact that we actually have entered into 
the prelude to the Great Tribulation. One person said it's like the 1930s all over again. Go to endtime.com and under Irvin's Thoughts, click the Great Tribulation to watch this video. Jesus said that there would be a particular generation that would see specific things take place. And this would be the people that would see his second coming to the earth. The big question is, can we know this generation? Jesus talked about it in Matthew 24. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and put out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see all these things, you know that he is near, at the very gates. Truly, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Jesus said, when you see these things, what things was he talking about? In the DVD, This Generation Shall Not Pass, Irvin discusses the events that must occur that will let us know the generation that shall not pass until the second coming of Jesus Christ. Get this enlightening lesson by calling 1-800-END-TIME or go to endtime.com. Let me just say to you that we do have a video, uh, Israel's Future According to Bible Prophecy. I made this video in downtown Jerusalem on November the 12th of 2013. And I presented a little bit over an hour, Israel's Future According to Bible Prophecy. In this series, we're going to go much in depth much more in depth than I did on that DVD. However, if you would like to have that DVD, Israel's Future According to Bible Prophecy, spoken to 200 Jewish people in downtown Jerusalem, uh, I would certainly let you know about that, that it is available. All you have to do is call us 1-800-END-TIME and you can order that DVD from us right here and they'll send it straight out to you. That will serve as an overview of what I'm going through right now in greater detail. Okay, so let's go back now. So we know that Israel's going to survive. We know that Iran's going to survive. Let's go to our next slide and let's see what else we know. What happens after this war? What's the world going to look like when one third of mankind has been obliterated? Will the world be in shock? What will the news media be talking about? Uh, what's going to be the change of attitude? Now, you would think that there would trigger a great revival. It will trigger some revival. But at the end of the prophecy in verse 20 and 21 of Revelation chapter 9, it says, Still men repented not of their adultery, their fornications, their thefts, their lying, in spite of it. After all this is over, you know, after 9-1-1, you know, it, for about three weeks, everybody was really God conscious. Nobody complained if someone prayed in public. But it wasn't long until everybody went back. Now, this is going to be much, much greater. But the same thing is going to happen. I don't know how long it's going to take for people to forget, but they're going to fall back. Now, we don't want to let that happen. While people are stirred up, we want to lead them to the only answer, and that is to Jesus Christ. Nevertheless, as the world is in utter chaos, what's going to happen? What's the world going to be like? Well, we know that shortly after this, a world leader that the Bible calls the beast or the Antichrist is going to arise to power. He will undoubtedly use the aftermath of this horrible war as an entrance ramp to power. He will stand up saying, here's what we do. He will provide the leadership to try to put the world back together again. And many people will follow him. At the same time, the center for world power is going to shift. It will no longer be the United States of America. 
the Bible very clearly in Revelation chapter number 13, verse 1 and 2, depicts what the end time government of the Antichrist will look like. It says that this beast, and you know a beast is always used to symbolize a kingdom, a nation, or an empire. This beast is going to have the body of the leopard, Germany, the feet of the bear, Russia, the mouth of the lion, Great Britain, and the ten horns of a ten-nation union out of Europe. So all of those are European powers. The center for world power is going to swing to Europe. The United States, whether it's been diminished by war or whether there's such an outcry from the populace of the United States saying, we've got to stay at home and mind our own business. I don't know exactly what will happen. Perhaps we have someone in the White House by then that understands the prophecies and realizes that these prophecies cannot be changed, but we can allow the United States to be a harbor of safety during this time of unprecedented storm. However it all comes together, we know that Europe is going to be the power base of the Antichrist. Now, we also know that once the Antichrist is in total power, he will start persecuting those who disagree with him. Amongst those will be many Jewish people and true Christians. That's the reason here at End Time Ministries, we've started a fund called the Another Jewish Holocaust Fund. There is another time, Jesus described it as a time of great tribulation, such as never has been before, no, nor ever again shall be. Daniel prophesied about it in Daniel chapter 12, the last chapter of the prophetic book of Daniel. And he said, Michael's going to stand up, for then shall be a time of trouble such as never has been before. So there is going to be this time called the great tribulation since the power base of the Antichrist will be Europe. Europe is going to be one of the worst places to be as he consolidates his power and demands absolute compliance to his programs and absolute obedience to him. Ultimately, his influence will spread across most of the world. Now, there are going to be some dissenting factions because the Bible paints a picture of the Antichrist fighting wars during the final three and a half years. That's in the last half of the 11th chapter of Daniel. So we know he's going to have some resistance. We know that Jordan and Israel will never fall under the power of the Antichrist. It appears that the United States is going to remain Israel's best friend all through the time called the Great Tribulation. That means we're going to be defending Israel and guarding Israel against the Antichrist. So it gives us some picture of what's going to be happening. Now, like I mentioned, the world government of the end time, Germany, Russia, Great Britain, and the Ten Nation Alliance from Europe undoubtedly formed out of the European Union. That's where we are right now. Now, let's go on to our next slide. Now, during this battle, many people are going to say, oh, this is the Battle of Armageddon. This is horrible. And it will cause them to be further deceived because they'll say, hey, it's at Armageddon that the Messiah comes. And so the Antichrist will arise undoubtedly claiming to be the Messiah. And furthermore, the world's leading Christian, a man the Bible calls the false prophet, will tell the world, this is your answer. This is your Messiah. Give your allegiance to him. Follow after him. And the Bible says, all will worship the Antichrist except those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So we've got a huge job to do. We've got to have the greatest revival the world has ever known during all of this cataclysmic, uh, these events that are going to take place. Okay, now let's continue on. After the war, the world's going to cry for a strengthened UN. They're going to say, look, we've been playing games with this. We've allowed the big five to have their veto power over anything passed from the UN Security Council. We can't tolerate this anymore. The time has come for a bona fide one world government system. They're probably going to remove the veto power from the big five. That's the United States, Great Britain, France, Russia, and China. A lot of people are saying if it wasn't for the veto power, we could settle the Syrian problem. We could settle the Israeli problem. But Russia's there to protect Syria with 
her veto. And the United States is there to protect Israel with her veto so that they don't have to obey, obey the world government apparatus. Whatever happens, the cry for world government is going to be absolutely stunning at this particular time. Then they're going to demand a settlement of the Palestinian-Israeli conflict because most world leaders say that's the center of all the conflict in the world. Therefore, I can see the community of nations saying to the Palestinians and the Israelis, all right, enough already. We're not tolerating this conflict anymore. Here's what you're going to do. Here's how it's going to be settled. And a conflict will be adopted by, by both Israelis and Palestinians. Now, I can't tell you that's exactly the way it's going to come about. But when 2.3 billion people are being buried the possibility of war ever again is going to be so abhorrent that the peoples of the world are going to cry out against any military power. So consequently, somehow, some way, uh, very quickly on the heels of this war, and the Bible doesn't explicitly say that the agreement comes after the war, it could come before, but it certainly looks like to me it's going to come afterwards. Now we're talking today about Israel's future, according to Bible prophecy. We know for certain there's going to be a peace agreement between the Palestinians and the Israelis. The Bible says that. In our next lesson on this subject, we're going to show you the details about the prophecy. I'm telling you, the future of Israel is prophesied by God in the most minute detail. And it's not a good future. It does end well. But for those who do not come to know Jesus Christ, it's not going to end well. It's going to be catastrophic. The Bible actually says in Zechariah chapter 13, about verse 8 and 9, that only one third of Israel is going to survive the coming Holocaust and the battle of Armageddon. That kills me. I love the Jewish people. I want to do everything in my power to save them. That's the reason we've established the Another Jewish Holocaust Fund. If you would like to contribute to that fund, we're, I'm, I have plans to go to the absorption center in Israel where Jews that are coming and making Aliyah into Israel, where they bring them to prepare them to be assimilated into Israeli society. I'm going to be going there next month when I'm in Israel. I would love to take a sizable check with me at that time to help Jews to make their way out of the places of danger. Every Jewish person needs to get out of Europe as quickly as possible. We're not even getting to them with this message. We would like to be on the air right now on the Christian network that covers Europe better than any other. Uh, but it's expensive, and we are in arrears right now. We don't have the finances to do it. But if you would like to sponsor this program, End of the Age, to be on around Europe every week between now and next spring, it costs $25,000 a month is what it costs. If you're out there and God's blessed you where you could do something special, Call and ask for me personally at our number here. If I can't answer at the time, they'll take your message and I'll return your call. If there's somebody out there that could afford to pay for the next six months, I'm due to do a crusade in London in April and one in Paris. I would love to be on the air between now and then in order to tell the people what's coming. So if you're interested, call us 800 in time. If you want to make a donation, 1-800-IN-TIME. If ever people need to hear the unvarnished truth, it is now. There are some subjects that are not politically correct to talk about, but they're urgent. That's why I'm grateful for In Time Magazine. If you're not a subscriber, you're missing information that will really impact your life. In Time has a bi-monthly magazine that explains how current events are fulfilling Bible prophecy. You can get a two-year subscription for only $29. You can also get a bulk subscription and pass them out to your church. We have gotten reports that End Time Magazine 
has caused spiritual awakenings in churches when they see the prophecies being fulfilled right now. You can start your own ministry and leave them in doctor's offices, libraries, laundromats. You never know if you might be responsible for saving someone who is searching for the unvarnished truth. That's what the magazine did in my life. Call 1-800-363-8463. That's 1-800-IN-TIME and get your subscription today. Watch The Prophecies Come Alive on End of the Age every Monday night at 7.30 p.m. Central Time on TBN. If you're wondering questions like, why is anti-Semitism rising in our world again? What are the seven trumpets? And what about the Antichrist? Where will he come from? What will happen at the second coming of Christ? And what is even my place in the end time? All these questions are answered on our End of the Age television program. You can watch it on TBN, The Church Channel, Daystar, and more. Call us at 1-800-END-TIME to find what station End of the Age is on in your area. That's 1-800-363-8463. Or go to endtime.com and click the broadcast link. Our lesson series is Israel's future according to Bible prophecy. It's laid out in intricate detail. Now, to those of you that might want to donate to the Another Jewish Holocaust Fund, we feel so strongly that we need to have a lot of resources available so that when the crunch comes down, we'll be able to quickly fly Jews and true Christians out of Europe to safety. We may have to bring some to the U.S. We may have to bring, take some to Israel. But we want to have the funds to do that with. Uh, if you would like to do that, anyone who would make a donation of $500 or more, we have produced this new DVD, America's God-Given Destiny. Like I said before, some people say it's the best we've ever done. Allison Huntley has written a song, America's God-Given Destiny. It is tremendous. You will be moved. What we're doing though, because we want to motivate people to give to this cause, we are reserving that DVD. We're not making it available to just everyone. We want to devote this to saving the Jewish people. The Bible says those that bless you, I will bless them. Those that curse you, I will curse them. We want to bless the people. After all, this is our Lord's people according to the flesh. They gave us our Bible. Every word of the Bible was written by a Jewish person. They gave us our Messiah. Now they need us and we want to help them. Their, their exile has been overturned. They're now going back to Israel after being in exile for 1,878 years. But the pressure of the world is coming against Israel. The United Nations votes overwhelmingly against Israel almost every time. It doesn't matter who's right and who's wrong. Anti-Semitism is absolutely simmering around the world. So what we want to do is to accrue the funds, a war chest, so that Everyone, as soon as we can let the Jewish people know you've got to get out, and as soon as we can convince them to believe us, we will be able to help those that need our help to get out. So if you'd like to contribute to the Another Jewish Holocaust Fund, just call us right now, 1-800-END-TIME. And if you contribute $500, we'll be sending you the DVD, America's God-Given Destiny. I think you're going to be tremendously blessed by this, and Allison Huntley's song is just absolutely wonderful. It will move you to tears when you see it, and I know you're going to be blessed by it. Now, uh, we have been promising this DVD for a while, and some of you out there have already made your contribution, but you haven't got your DVD yet. Well, thank God it's finished. We now have sent it to the closed caption people because we have to have closed caption. That'll take a couple of days. 
that will then be brought back and put into a DVD format. So I would say that we should start shipping this these within the next couple of weeks. Thank you for your patience. Um, it's taken longer than we thought to produce these things, but the product is wonderful. You're going to, well, the, the, the wait's going to be worth it. So anyway, if you're out there and you'd like to receive this DVD, or maybe you just want to give anyway, but one of the blessings of giving will be to get this new DVD, America's God-Given Destiny, because America is not only mentioned in the Bible. Some people say it's not. It is. It's in the Bible. I can prove it to you. Furthermore, not only is the United States in the Bible, but our future and what we're going to do. And that's really important to all of us. That's in the Bible as well. So America's God-given destiny. And you can get that message and at the same time, bless the people of Israel. So you're doing a double blessing here. And I hope you will do that. Okay, well, listen, we're going to continue uh, from time to time as I can get these prepared. We will continue our series on Israel's uh, the, the future of Israel, Israel's future according to Bible prophecy. I will be continuing to teach on these things. However, I do want to take time to take a couple of phone calls now. Uh, let's go first of all to Travis calling from Kentucky. Hello, Travis. As always, I appreciate your graciousness allowing me on the program. I really enjoy and learn a lot from it. Thank I you. I want to just say the, 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 if there were a title or, or a, uh, of, of my comment or question, it would be, are there times where the interests of the, of the Jewish nation of Israel uh, conflict with Christians? Now, the reason I bring that up, and, and, and certainly the other, other um, title would be, is it really true that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself? Can fear itself and hysteria, be it if it really is based on theological convictions that Russia is Gog in the Bible, and that's a whole other theological debate and topic I'm not going to get into right now, but, you know, with the... Growing up during the latter days of the Cold War, seeing the United States back the terroristic contras in Nicaragua in the name of fighting the Russian-backed Sandinistas, the death squad government of El Salvador, uh, ousting governments and coups and, and backing right-wing brutal regimes and backing the Mujahideen in Afghanistan, being tied to the hip to Saudi Arabia, which literally is the worst place for Christians. My difficulty is this. When we look at the Syrian conflict, we're angry at Russia because Russia doesn't just want to bomb ISIS. They want to bomb al-Qaeda. They want to bomb Muslim Brotherhood. They want to bomb all these terroristic rebels. Many of them have slaughtered Christians, not just ISIS. Travis, we're you running know, out of time. Can... Travis, we're running out of time. So get, okay. to your... Travis, get to your point if you can. We're running out of time. Very, very briefly, I'm just, I'm just saying it seems to me Russia is on the side of Christians in, in Syria, warning us about what would happen in Iraq, warning us what would happen in, in, in Libya. We seem to be in bed with the very Gulf states, yeah, which let me are the most oppressive to Christians. So I, how, under, how I understand you? what you're saying. Let me respond to you, Travis. Thank you very much for your phone call. Uh, you know, Travis, you're right. For example, Israel right now, some of Israel is very anti-Christ. There are 10 to 20 percent of the religious people of Israel that hate Christianity. Maybe not that high, but nevertheless, I would say there's 5 percent that really hate Christianity. When I was there in 2013 and held my uh, session with Israel's Future According to Bible Prophecy, there were a couple of anti-missionary uh, Jews there, and they took our brochure and put a swastika over the top of my face. Uh, they were just incensed that I would dare to speak in Israel uh, in favor of Christianity and the Bible. Uh, but there were 200 that were there that didn't feel that way. So I w didn't allow myself to be uh, sidestepped by the two, uh, but I was gearing to the 200 hungry. Uh, but you're right. Many things that Israel does right now is not Christian, uh, but... We do know that Jesus Christ, when he comes back, will fight for Israel. We don't have to guess about that. Zechariah 14, verse 1 through 4, clearly depicts that when the world community comes down against Israel to try to force Israel to withdraw from Jerusalem, that Israel will be losing that war and actually half of the city of Jerusalem will fall to the world government armies. That's when Jesus will come. Israel will be on the brink of being annihilated and Jesus will come and fight for them. So it is true that Israel is living in blindness right now. However, Israel is moving towards the light. And that's the reason that we're pushing so hard because 
It is a prophesied revival. And to me, when we know something is prophesied, you align yourself with the plan of God. You don't work counter to the plan of God. You align yourself with it. Uh, it's like a weather vane aligning itself with the way the wind is blowing. And when you align yourself with what God is doing in the earth, then God, all of God's power gets behind you and lends to your success. That's the best I can say right now. I want to take one more call before we run totally out of time. LaVon is calling from Arkansas. Hello, LaVon. Hello. Hello. What's on your mind? Thank you for taking my call. I have a question. In the book of Revelations, chapter 4, verse 4, it mentions 24 elders around the throne. And I wonder if you could tell me who they are or what their significance is. Yes. Uh, you know that there are 12 heads of the 12 tribes of Israel, and there were 12 apostles representing the Old Testament saints and the New Testament saints. In Revelation chapter 5, it tells us what the elders are saying as they fall down before the Lamb, Jesus Christ. They say, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our God. So these 24 elders are redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ and they're going to rule and reign as kings and priests with Jesus Christ, and they say, and we shall reign on the earth. The Bible teaches, except a person is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So the elders are born again. Now the Old Testament elders, they were born again only vicariously in that they partook, partook of the tabernacle plan, which was a type and a shadow of the New Testament reality where people could be really born again. But they went through the shedding of blood, the washing of water, and the infilling of the oil, which was the type of the Holy Spirit. So that's the best I can do. That's a little bit of a deep theological question there, Levon. But nevertheless, uh, the elders represent the 12 uh, heads of the tribes of Israel and the 12 apostles and they all are redeemed and they all will reign with Jesus Christ all during his 1,000 year kingdom. Thank you very much, LaVon, for your question. To the rest of you, I could not get to. I do apologize. Uh, however, we are totally out of time. Thank you very much uh, for being patient. Now, uh, as we are wrapping up here, we're getting ready to enter the last two months of uh, the year. End Time Ministries has been very aggressive trying to reach this world and it's working. We had over 1 million visitors to our website this last year with 2.6 million page views. We received a, an email from Dubai. We're getting correspondence from every nation on earth. That's thanks to you who are partners with us. Some things have to go to pay the bills. If you would stand with us, if you would be a partner with us, it would help us so much. The number to call to do that is 1-800-END-TIME. Thank you so much. I'll see you tomorrow. Politics and Religion is a production of End Time Ministries. It is a daily one-hour broadcast dedicated to bringing you the prophetic fulfillments happening on a daily basis. If you would like to listen to archive shows, subscribe to End Time Magazine, find a prophecy conference in your area, order End Time resources, watch our TV show, or subscribe to our free weekly e-news, call 1-800-END-TIME or go to endtime.com and take advantage of what our site has to offer. Connect to End Time Ministries by partnering with us and help this message make a global impact. End Time Ministries is partner supported. We would like to say thank you to all of our loyal partners, listeners, and friends for helping make politics and religion and End Time Ministries possible.